For those serious about becoming successful, consistently profitable options traders, now is the time to build skills in technical analysis, market analysis, and applied volatility to get those results. We have multiple memberships, starting with our Go membership that teaches rules-based trading and our Pro membership that teaches more subjective trading. For more information, go to LockInYourSuccess.com slash memberships. Hello, everyone. My name is John Locke. I'd like to welcome you to The Winning Trade, but first, the required disclaimer material. This presentation is given for educational purposes only. We're not broker dealers or financial advisors, and we're not making any specific trade recommendations. Also, please be aware your risk and trading options is substantial, so please make sure you're aware of all your risks prior to placing any trades. And also note that in this presentation, we are including hypothetical computer, computer simulated trades and the results. They really feel as accurately represent as possible. Keep in mind, live results can vary from simulated results for many different reasons. If this is your first experience with us, my name is John Locke. I'm a trading performance, wealth, and success coach with Locke and Your Success LLC, where myself and our mentors are here to help you win in the markets and in life as well. And today, I'm here to bring you into the realm of high probability options trading, to where we utilize option strategies that can make money through the passage of time, rather than depending on price movement in order to be profitable. This doesn't mean we're going to win all the time, but we do often win much more often than we would if we were purely taking a directional bet. And the option strategy that I would love to share with you today is called the Super Simple Bearish Butterfly, also known as the Bear. It's a variation on the Bearish Butterfly that we did on the last episode, but it does have its unique differences, and these unique differences will allow it to perform better in some types of market conditions. So this is a trading strategy that we do on the Russell 2000. It takes advantage of a variety of market conditions. It typically does well in downtrending markets sideways trending markets, uh, volatile markets, and usually mildly uptrending markets. If you have a runaway uptrending market, that's uh, that's going to be the problematic situation for the bear trade, and the name should kind of give that away. That said, we do often do pretty well on most up moves. Uh, the trading strategy itself requires a minimum of $5,000 planned capital. It's a profit target of 30% of that planned capital, or $1,500. And we have an exit loss trigger of 30% or $1,500. So why don't we just jump in and take a look at the example trade for this week. Before we do, I'd just like to remind you to please like and share our videos and make sure that you subscribe. It helps us continue to bring you this wonderful content. Okay, so this is the bear trade. The example we're going to do today is a $5,000 planned capital trade. It's going to start out as a one lot butterfly with 50 point wings with the short strikes approximately 20 points under the money. We generally say 17 to 27 points and with the asset price at 2016, it's a little bit further behind the market than usual. Uh, but we're going to start at the 1990 level. So this is a trade that does not go 56 days. It, uh, it generally is exited about 21 days to expiration. The exits are typically extremely clear, but there are some cases where the exits may be a little bit uh, subjective. And that was the case with this trade. We'll talk about why it was maybe a little bit subjective and why we exited when we did. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll also uh, show you the adjustment strategies and so forth. So on the last cycle we did, I believe a bearish butterfly trade. This is a bear trade. It looks, the entry is pretty much identical. Uh, in this case here, we're using a put butterfly. Realistically, it doesn't matter. Put, call butterfly, iron butterfly, whatever. Um, they're all synthetically the same position. We demonstrate this one with a put butterfly. The bear strategy, by the way, is a strategy that's available in our Fundamentals of Investing and Trading Library, which is free with our Go membership. So consider coming on over to LockInYourSuccess.com. That's LockInYourSuccess.com and becoming a member. So this is the way that this trade starts. As you can see, we are negative delta coming in. The downside adjustments on this trade at this point are basically we're just going to exit this trade if we get under 10 points under our long strike, which is about 1920, which would bring us here. So generally, if the market's overly bearish, we'll usually exit this and make money. They're typically up money. Sometimes they're down a little bit, but usually they're up in most cases. Uh, if the asset price goes up, uh, similar to the bearish butterfly, we have a control point of uh, 1990 that gives us an add point at 2030 an add point at 2050 and we start rolling at 2060. Uh, unlike the bearish butterfly this does have a limit to how much it can be rolled once we get 
uh, at our control point plus 90, the next roll from that point is going to be dependent on what our PL is. If we start to get dropped down too much PL, then we're going to do what we call a roll stall. And we're going to wait until the market comes back to us, or we have to exit due to date, or we hit an exit loss trigger. Okay. So from here, what happened with this trade is, is this is our entry. You notice we only have uh, $670 in the trade. It's not uncommon for this trade to maybe have you know, $1,200, $1,500 in it, you know, even though we have our $5,000 plan capital, meaning that our returns on what we usually have at risk are typically higher than what they are on our plan capital. So let's move on here. I'm just going to jump to our first adjustment. It's February 23rd. Let's go to our first adjustment. Uh, only February 27th, so only four days. What ends up happening is the Russell gets a very large up move right out of the gate here. And this was our original position. We had an ad point at 2050. We had an ad point, I'm sorry, at 2030. We had an ad point at 2050. We have a roll at 2060, which we didn't get yet. So what we're going to do is just add in our second third with our short strikes at 2010 and our third thirds with our short strikes at 2030. Uh, and this is our position here. Now from here, we're going to, if the asset price gets over 2060, we're going to make a roll. At 2070, we're going to make a roll. At 2080, we're going to make a roll. At some point, we're going to hit our reference point plus 90, right? So 1990 plus 90. So that's 18, that's going to be 2080. And there's going to be a roll stall if the asset gets over that um, gets over that number. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to go to the next adjustment. Okay, so here we are, and the asset price is, is at 2073, uh, which means we triggered a 2060 roll and we triggered a 2070 roll. That means we're going to sell our 1990 butterflies and our 2010 butterflies, and we're going to buy 2050 and 2070 butterflies. So when we do that, the position looks like this. And here is our new position going forward. So if we take a look at the price charts, just for reference, we entered down in here and we had just an explosive up move off of that area. If we go to next adjustment, that is going to occur here on March 7th. Uh, we've exceeded 2080 in our asset price and that's going to be our next roll trigger. So we're gonna come in here, I'm gonna sell my 2030s, I'm gonna buy my 2090s, and that looks like this here. And from this point, this is our plus 90 roll. Here, I cannot make further rolls in the strategy if I'm drawing down more than 5% of our plant capital. Right now, that, that would be $250. Right now, we're not under that, so we could technically make the roll, but we also have a roll stop trigger in the context that I also can't roll unless we're over 2095. So realistically, 2095 would be our next roll, and that would only occur if our drawdown was less than 250. This is where the strategy resists continuing to go higher. The bearish butterfly um, uses one of those metrics, but not the other one. So let's just go to next adjustment here. So what ends up happening here is we get whipsawed. So the market came up uh, a lot, and then it whipsawed down to the uh, back to the downside um, very, very quickly. So in a matter of four days, we've lost almost 100 points in the Russell. And what that does is that kicks us out the backside of our expiration tent. So we're using this level right. Let me see if I can expand this. We're using this number, this level right here, 2116. If we're positive delta and we're outside that range, then we're going to start exiting the position. That's true here. So I'm going to exit out of my 2090s and I'm going to see what, what it looks like. If I exit out of my 2090s, it shifts my tent point back a little bit. Uh, it's okay to be positive delta. We're back in the tent and everything is fine. So that is our downside adjustment when we get whipsawed to the downside. If I go to my next adjustment, see it's March 14th, basically nothing happens until March 27th. So we're basically in the trade for the next 13 days. And then on March 22nd, what happens is we end up getting a, a very large up move in the asset. So what's going on here is we have a 
$1,500 profit target. The trade didn't go well. We, we had a very large up move, and then we got whipsawed to the downside, and now we're getting whipsawed to the upside. Typically, our standard exit on this trade happens under two, under two different types of conditions. Condition number one is we're 21 days to expiration. If we're 21 days to expiration, that is a forced rule-based exit on the strategy and the trade is exited. We're 23, we're not there yet. The optional exit on the strategy that we have is when our next cycle is 56 days to expiration. Most of the time, right, so our next cycle is May. Most of the time, the April cycle will get to 21 days to expiration at 56 days to expiration or before, but occasionally when we have our long cycles, sometimes it doesn't get to 21 days to expiration until the May is already 56, and that's our normal entry date. So within that range, we have what we call subjectivity on whether we want to exit the trade or not. And if we go back to the previous Friday and we look at the trade, realistically, this trade really isn't in any trouble. There's no cause to do anything. And if that's the case, typically I'll just stay in the current trade that I'm in. But as we go along here, we'll go to Monday. Okay, we creep up a little bit more. Tuesday, we pretty much stay the same. And then here on Wednesday, what ends up happening is we get a large up move that's going to create a situation where the trade is going to have to get fully scaled in and possibly rolled again. And I only have two days left. There is an execution cost to that. And you have to decide if I'm going to make back my execution costs in two days to make what we would, what we would call a major adjustment. And the answer is probably not. Plus the market speed's picking up and I'm late entering the other cycle. So in that case there, what I'm generally gonna do under the, that specific situation is I'm gonna say, you know what? I'm not gonna make a major adjustment to this strategy. I'm just gonna close it and I'm gonna open up into the next strategy. And that's exactly what we did. We, op we closed this one out at about a $425 profit and we opened up our May expiration cycle over here at 51 days to expiration. And the reason we had the late expiration, again, is because we don't overlap the bear trades and the other trade was still active. And once it's not active, we get back in the other cycle and we're good to go. If we go back to April here, again, we're closed at about a $425 profit on our $5,000 plan capital, which is approximately 8% uh, or so, which you might say, well, you know, it's 30 days, 8%. That was not all that wonderful. Uh, yeah, it was a challenging trade. But one of the things I do love about this is the actual capital in this trade was only about 2200 So our return on actual capital was approximately 18% in only 33 days. And that is one of the reasons I love the bear, this episode's winning trade. If you like the bear trade, as I do, I invite you to come on over to LockInYourSuccess.com. That's L-O-C-K-E in your success.com and discover how you too can follow along with the bear real time as each trade unfolds every week during our Options Training for Income webinars that we hold with our Go members. Not only do we cover the bear trade, but we also cover 11 other powerful trading strategies each and every week real time. And we discuss the pluses and minuses of doing certain things and why we shouldn't, shouldn't do it and when we should vary from the rules and so forth uh, every single week when our Go membership. So come on over and check that out. Also, make sure you go to thewinningtrade.com. That's thewinningtrade.com. And you can discover past winning trades. You can find bonus material. And perhaps best of all, you can check out our free trading performance podcast where you can learn to skyrocket your trading regardless of the type of trading you do. If you have any questions, comments, or anything you'd like to see in the next winning trade, please put that in the comments below. Also remember, please like and subscribe. And from there, I answer all questions personally. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you on the next winning trade.